Ahoy, all of you flick freaks out there, what is going on? My name is Andrew, and we have a very special video for everyone. Today we will actually be talking about a topic that's a lot more serious than what we normally do. I try to keep this channel light and funny, but this is actually a subject that is very important and personal to me, and that's living with anxiety and panic attacks. Now, for those of you out there who are unfamiliar with anxiety and panic attacks, I will do my best to describe what an attack feels like. For me personally, you get this overwhelming feeling of complete helplessness and fear. A million thoughts begin to race into your mind that you can't control. Your heart begins to race, and that's when you feel like you're going to pass out. And as soon as that feeling hits you, you start to fear that if you do pass out, that you'll never wake up. You feel literally like you're about to go insane. And even though you've had a hundred panic attacks before, you are convinced that if this one doesn't kill you, it is going to be the one that drives you insane. Add on top of that a feeling of nausea and a headache, and you have what amounts to as an average panic attack. And if you're curious, anything can trigger an attack. It doesn't have to be a major event in your life, although they are more likely to trigger one. I've taken international flights, driven cross country, and talked in front of huge crowds, and I've been totally fine. And then there's been moments where I've been sitting in a room talking to my friends I've known my entire life, and one will be triggered for no apparent reason. Now, as I said before, I've dealt with panic attacks and anxiety my entire life. My childhood was especially difficult. I couldn't make friends when I was younger because I would always have an attack and get sick. Nobody wanted to play with the weird sick kid. The first day of school was always really difficult for me. I would spend half the day in the nurse's office as she tried to calm me down. Uh, I couldn't have birthday parties because if I did have a party, then it would be the other kids having fun while I would be in the bathroom curled up as my parents were trying to console me. Speaking of which, I really do need to give a lot of credit to my parents. As difficult as it was for me growing up, I can't imagine how hard it was for them seeing me like this. They really, really are superstars. I'm not really sure how it happened, but as I got older into my younger teens, I had less frequent attacks. I could go to events, I could be in crowds, I could have conversations with people, and there would be a chance that I would be okay. But then all of a sudden, high school hit, and it all came flooding back. They say that high school is emotionally taxing on you, and I definitely felt that. I never went to a single party whenever I was in high school, and I had four friends that hung out with me. And they were awesome enough to understand what was going on, and they would tough it out for me. Again, superstars. Now, I am happy to say that it's been over 10 years since I've been in high school, and that now I have the best handle on my anxiety than I've ever had in my entire life. I like to take some credit for this, but honestly, I gotta give a lot of credit to medication and an amazing support group. Now we come to the part of the video where I address the people out there who either suffer from severe anxiety or they know someone who does. I can only tell you what has worked for me in the past and hopefully will work for you as well. The most important thing I did is that I found a support group and I now have someone to talk to. Now, if you're like me, talking to people can be difficult, but if you power through it and you find someone who's willing to listen, it can be an amazing tool to getting your anxiety in check. Another thing that I did is that I found a doctor who prescribed me medication. Now, if you're not a fan of medication, I would still recommend that you talk to a physician because they may know other alternative methods to getting your anxiety under control. The unfortunate reality is that there is no magic pill that will cure your anxiety. This is going to be a part of me for the rest of my life, and I've come to terms with that. Now, I'm not saying that I haven't had the days where after or during an attack I've had the whole why me cry, because I have, but then I realized that wasn't helping. There's a great quote by Deepak Chopra that says, If you obsess over whether you are making the right decision, you are basically assuming that the universe will reward you for one thing and punish you for another. The universe has no fixed agendas. Once you make a decision, it works around that decision. There is no right or wrong, only a series of possibilities that shift with each feeling, thought, and action that you experience. I really do hope that this video has helped. I've been meaning to make it for a very long time now, and I thank everyone who's watched it, and I hope that it's been somewhat informative. Thank you to everybody for watching. We will catch you in the next video. Until then, be well, and Godspeed. We're, We're kind of funny, funny and, and this video, video is over. <laughs> oh, 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 oh,